Hey, this is Pamela Riemenschneider. I'm the retail editor for Blue Book Services, and this is the Produce Reporter Week in Review. Greg, you were off along with most of America this week. There are a lot of people on vacation this week, but when I check in on what's on Blue Book Services, there's a lot going on this week. People are missing out if they're not working. Right, and this stuff was not filler. I mean, it seems like the joke is that everyone is done and everything is a 2024 problem. Um, but let's see, we've got a spinach recall. Um, we've got a mung bean sprouts recall. We've got an update to another outbreak. We've got, um, let's see, a federal indictment. Um, we're not talking about a slow news week here uh, from the produce reporter. So it has been quite busy um, on the news desk. That produce indictment, uh... We, we had been working on that before I checked out this week and then finally we got enough information. Uh, so what did you find out on that? What should our audience know about that one? So what it involves is kind of a, it's, it's financial fraud. It's three counts against a person who, according to the indictment, was a founder and significant shareholder for an indoor farming operation in Florida called Green Life Farms. Um, Green Life Farms sent out a pretty scathing um, statement uh, listing that, you know, this guy is just a representative of ours. We had no knowledge of his involvement with this. We've cooperated fully. And uh, they immediately terminated him when they found out about this, this indictment coming down and the investigation um, to it. So a, a little bit of back and forth of saying, no, that guy, that guy is just a PR rep. Um, but the federal indictment did say um, that he was a significant shareholder and the financial fraud involved his uh, uh, company selling shares and selling interest in uh, uh, various things and probably including Green Life Farms as part of, part of fundraising rounds. So um, there was a lot of back and forth. Uh, we, we held on to it to make sure that we at least got a statement from Green Life before um, we ran just the indictment release. But you can read the entire indictment yourself. Um, we've linked to it from ProduceBlueBook.com. It does sound like Green Life's statement um, makes sense. And the, and that person wasn't like embezzling money or right. messing with the company's operations. He was skimming off selling investments in it. Yeah. So that, it does that, not sound as damaging as it could be for a company to be involved in something like this. Right. It sounds like the company is saying, Hey, we're business as usual. We're still in operation. Um, and the only involvement that we have in this is that the indictment lists our business as something that he was involved with. Um, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. I don't expect it to get uh, too much messier from a produce um, news standpoint. Um, but from the standpoint of like our readers need to know about this, this is what's going on. Here's this and here's the statement from the company. Um, you know, pretty cut and dry, just the facts. So we also have a couple acquisitions this week. I mean, why not? Yeah, why not? Let's 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 do the Friday. Let's do the end of the year news drop. We got Grub Market uh, acquired a Florida company, and then First Fruits out of Washington acquired a Michigan apple grower. They acquired uh, Applewood Fresh, and so those both dropped this week out of nowhere, <laughs> kind of. But it is kind of making sense to go ahead and get that news announced before the end of the year as most people wrap up their financials as far as, I mean, do, do you have your expense reports in? Um, it's kind of the thing people are right. looking at before we get to the end of the year. We also had another interesting thing that I saw that um, I think the produce industry needs to know about, especially suppliers. Um, Whole Foods has made it official with their pollinator policy. Um and this is something that I think comes around a couple of times every other, every couple of years we, or at least a couple of times a year I hear about pollinator health and taking care of the bees. Well, Whole Foods, their new policy requires all fresh produce and floral and floral to use IPM, integrated pest management, um, prohibit the use of certain um, insecticides in all potted plants that they sell and encourage, here's the, here's where it kind of gets a little um, wishy-washy, encourage all fresh produce and floral suppliers to phase out the use of those um, insecticides or 
I'm not, I don't even know if I'm going to try to pronounce this, the neo econoids. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going was, any further than that. I was waiting for you to pronounce what, what they all are. Yeah, uh, I'm not going there. <laughs> neo nictinoids. Neo nictinoids. There you go. Now, once I hear it, I can say it, but it was one of those things where it's like, Oh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't prep this beforehand. It wasn't like I turned on the camera right after I was, I was saying rubber, rubber baby buggy bumpers, you know, <laughs> I'm not a broadcast person. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's one of those things you have to say out loud a few times on your own. Well, I thought what was interesting about it is that they are making it like on paper official and notifying and they've had be awareness campaigns before. And even the art that I pulled for the story was from their promotion talking about a produce department without bees. Um, so that's one step forward. We You also see something go viral every once in a while. I see it passed around on Facebook where they talk about how Aldi also does not allow potted plants that use these. And I believe that involves Aldi only in Europe. I'm not sure about the Aldis here in the US. Um, so it's something that is not unfamiliar to the produce industry, but it's something everyone needs to know. Yeah, well, also, we're so familiar with bees and their importance on so many of our crops. So I, that doesn't, it doesn't seem like a situation like the, the plastic issue in Canada where you got to fight really hard against something like that. This right. Not- yeah, this seems like one of those things that the industry is going to be familiar with. And it's and I, I believe most organizations that use bees to pollinate their things um, are aware of these these efforts and to phase out these kinds of uh, pesticides. So it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. I want to pull up one more thing. Category Partners sent out a news release that... Um, hit midweek talking about the cost of Christmas. It's kind of um, a Christmas meal. It's kind of a reminiscent of the Farm Bureau. And when the Farm Bureau is talking about how much Thanksgiving dinner costs, well, according to uh, Category Partners, Christmas dinner at a supermarket will be approximately 7% higher than 2022, but 18% higher than the year before. Yeah. Did they take it all the way back to 2019? I would like to know those numbers too. I like, like, let's get that uh, comparison because I'm sure it will be quite a bit higher. Um, the the really important thing I think people need to notice, and I think we're going to see a ton of promotions, and this isn't related per, to produce, but it is related to food. Seafood, it their prices have, and Anna Marie and I have talked about this just off offline and outside of our produce chats. Um, seafood prices were down and seafood prices are down and continue to be down. So we're going to see a lot of promotion of seafood. And I think that bodes well for produce because produce and seafood pair so well together. Um, I I mean, the obvious like fish and lemons kind of thing, but think about all the different things that can go with seafood. We're going to see retailers and promotion organizations hit seafood hard this year, I think. Yeah, well, seafood tends to be a bigger deal for the following weekend after Christmas. With I see it a lot with New Year's Day celebrations. New Year's Day celebrations and even going into the spring, once we hit Mardi Gras, right after Mardi Gras, a lot more seafood consumption. And I think there will be a lot of promotion opportunities going into the first quarter. Um, and then according to their data analysis, just to mention it, um, overall grocery like center store, 10 percent higher. Uh, Bakery, 9.5% higher. Frozen, 7.8% higher. Produce, only 2.2%. They were the lowest increase. Only seafood was lower at negative 1.7% over the year ago. We've seen uh, both frozen and canned outpacing fresh for quite a while on the the government figures from Bureau of Labor on uh, inflation. Yeah, we've seen this. So it's it's not a surprise, but I thought that seafood number was something that we really should um, highlight and uh, dig deeper into when we talk about uh, forecasting what kind of trends we're going to see as far as promotions go. Well, I think we've talked newsy enough. Everyone's already checked out for the year. Um, well, not that you, you're on vacation next week. Not yeah, me. I'm on vacation actually the next two weeks. I counted it up and I got like 22 days off coming. So I'm going to be in that hazy, weird part where I'm full of cheese and I don't know what day it is. Yeah, that, that'll be me next week. I'll get, I'll, I'll be getting started on it, but I got to show you, you know, I've got my epic Santa squad and a lot of folks know that I collect weird Santas and I just added 
one that I think is special to the produce industry. Who knows why they made fruit basket Santa, but uh, nice. I found it at a thrift store. Fruit basket Santa goes with the Santa squad. He doesn't ha- he doesn't stand up very well, so I can't uh, go set him with the rest because um, he might fall over and break because it is ceramic. But <laughs> and we're also got our our envy sweaters. You ready to curl up with a, a mug of hot chocolate and watch some Hallmark movies? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it, is, it is football season and it seems like there's a game every day with the bowl games and nfl playing outside of sundays so to each his own <laughs> all right well on that note that's it for the produce reporter week in review everyone out there have a merry christmas but before you do go sign up for the produce reporter newsletter at producebluebook.com merry christmas everyone and to all a good night <laughs>